We rest in peace to Aaliyah. So a lot of people's careers would not be the same had she still been in the game. And the world knows that right now. Uh, she was a transcend setter basically for her style and for what she was able to do at the time when she was doing it. She was that she was that next group of generation for those young girls that were coming up who were just hitting adulthood, 20 and 21. You know, they had, see, people remember that they had TLC coming up as the same time as, <clears throat> you know, as uh, Aaliyah. They were all in the same situation. You know, and don't forget to hit the like button coming through the door. And Left Eye and all of those people, they all had like an impression. But this was that next generation of team. <clears throat> Where Aaliyah was a vocalist. And her first album was primarily written by R. Kelly. Like everything that he did <clears throat> was on that album. <clears throat> the One in a Million album, that was the growth. And that one took time to grow on everybody. It did not blow the charts away as soon as the one in a million came out. There's a lot of this stuff that we won't be able to go into, you know, out of respect for the families and all that stuff. And there's only things that we'll talk about on the Patreon. Now, Dame Dash did an interview with Entertainment Tonight where he talked about this anniversary of Aaliyah. I never like anniversaries of people's death or them going into spirit mode. I don't, I don't like to celebrate people passing. They seem to want to promote this only because they're getting ready to make money off of it. Whenever there's money to be made, that's when people want to talk about it. Well, the thing is, is when One in a Million came out, it was a new sound that TLC kind of had it, but T-Boss, it was like really no rap to it. They never, it was like the TLC sound almost, but just complete vocals with no rap. So, it, but it was everything, dancing, the dance moves, the choreography, that she was doing, her style. There were a lot of girls like Aaliyah out there that had that style that, you know, she she had a whole following. And when One in a Million came out, it was like the grown up, you know, like I'm grown now album. So she was getting ready to take off. She was, she was the next big thing. That's why she had the movies and they were going to make her the hugest star in the world. Yeah, Missy worked on that whole album. They they came over there and had an idea, and Missy just took off with it, man. And Aaliyah, they got it to work. And, man, it was incredible. But, like I said, it was new to people, so they really didn't gravitate to it right away. It took time, and boy, did it hit, and I swear it stayed on the charts. That album stayed there. And it took a, like about a month or two for people to catch on, but after that, it was there. You could not get rid of that album. Yeah. 
Well, I remember it because it came out at first and it wasn't really doing anything. Then it just started to go and take off and just kept going. It's like, man, it was another single that came out. I'm like, wow, they got another single on this album. Couldn't go nowhere, but uh. But see, now, for the first time ever, because of all this legal entanglement with managers, former managers, and all of this stuff, Aaliyah's music, for the first time, is now going on streaming platforms. So now, they want to celebrate the anniversary of her demise. You know, and, and they're doing all of this, and that's why they rolled Dame out for interviews to talk about it and all this because now it's all this money to be made on Aaliyah. So now they can, you know, this, you think about all the, the past two, three years of millions and millions of dollars they've missed out on, on Aaliyah's music. You know how many people want to stream Aaliyah's song? So now, all of it is resolved. Her music is finna come out on streaming platforms. So maybe her family and all of them, they can, you know, enjoy the, the revenues and the, the blessings, fruits of their labor to, that she put through in her hard work and making these classic songs. But there's other people that's finna get paid off this that probably shouldn't. That's sad, but hey, that's neither here nor there. It's out of our control. Now you're looking at Hype Williams, Aaliyah, and Dame Dash over here in the corner. It's probably the only photograph of them together. All three. Now, Hype was cool with Dame. Like, this was somebody he was very cool with. He did the Big Pimpin' video. Almost all the iconic hip hop videos of all time was shot by Hype Williams. He did Belly, he did California Love, he did Biggie's videos, uh, TLC. I mean, everybody in the game, their video had Hype Williams directing it. He is going into Hip Hop Hall of Fame. Now, Dame in this interview stated that Hype Williams took the plane that Lenny Kravitz had left for Aaliyah. That Lenny Kravitz was giving the plane to Aaliyah and Hype took the plane for himself. And that Aaliyah had Blueberry told him that the plane, she didn't like the plane that they got. But there's other details about this that I can only talk about on the Patreon. But I will tell you that this guy wrote a book and he's been talking about his book, The Cab Driver, who picked Aaliyah up and brought her to the, to the place where she can take the plane and leave. And he claimed that she was drugged and all of these different things in his book. And that they carried her and she didn't want to get on the plane and they forced her to get on the plane and all of this stuff. So that's in his book. And I'm here to tell you right now, that's a lie. Now we'll go into that more on the Patreon, but I'm to tell you that guy who wrote the book is lying. I'm not saying he didn't pick her up or whatever, but he's his story in that book is 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 so much fiction. It's unbelievable. <laughs> so on the Patreon, I'll tell you why that is. And go from there. Oh, the author was a woman? Well, she lied.
Now, don't forget to hit the like button, people, so they can know that you're real and not some bot. Oh, man, it's crazy right now. 20 years later? Because now it's the 20th anniversary of her demise, and they want to make money off of it. There's a lot of kids named after her. So Dame has been hot. He had a, a huge argument with Hype Williams about it. He didn't share what he said, but he said, ask Hype what he said to him. Now, Jay-Z continuously worked with Hype Williams, and I don't think it's fair to blame Hype for what he did. Hype did what normally a guy would do. You know, he going to keep whatever for him. He's the big star director, so he wanted to keep the plane for himself. She just happened to pass away in riding in that plane. Now, she didn't like the crop duster type of little small plane that they put her on, but that's the studio's fault. That's the people who got the plane for them to leave. They gave, they were too cheap. And I'll, I'll save all that for the Patreon. So I can't really throw that on Hype Williams. But there's a lot of details that people just don't know that went down. All within that 48 hours. But see, that's Dame talking. Dame is, Dame is somebody who tells you exactly what he wants to tell you omitting certain things so we don't know if he left that plane for Aaliyah or he said y'all could use it and hype just happened to be the one to get on it and take it we don't know You can't. One thing's for certain is you can't take Dane Dash's word for it. Because at the end of the day, of the Leah and how they just didn't have time, they was going to get married and, and all of these things, and they were a couple. The girl that he did marry. The girl he was dating was pregnant with his daughter at the time. Becky with the good hair was pregnant when Aaliyah died. So how are you talking about you love Aaliyah and you got your girl who you eventually married pregnant? Nobody's talking about that. Nobody's talking about that. But he's playing the role. Because there was once she passed, that was the face, you know, their faces was out there as a couple. 
So that was the role to play. Thanks, Sean. I appreciate it. Shouts out, Sean Blast. He was so much in love, he ended up marrying the girl that he had pregnant. Wow. Shouts out to Sweden. What's up? Y'all got some beautiful women out there in Sweden. Y'all gonna have a lot of black guys in trouble over there. Y'all got natural blonde hair, white women, thick. Like naturally thick, no plastic surgery, Kardashian stuff. They are thick like sisters over there in sweet. It'll blow your mind. You'll be running for the hills over there. Brothers gonna be in trouble. I'm sweet. You go to Glasgow, better look out. Yeah, well, see, that's the thing. That's what I say about Dame. You can never trust Dame. You can just trust Dame to be Dame. He never talk about how he was married, or not married, but had his wife that he ended up marrying, Becky with the good hair, who caused the whole controversy on the elevator. Aaliyah in Paris and Paris. Well, she was naturally beautiful and she didn't, people didn't have to go out and get plastic surgery. She didn't have to get boob implants. She was petite and was still beautiful. She didn't have to get lip injections. Am I lying? Am I lying? What? Am I lying? Wow, okay. People are calling me out. <laughs> yep, Mate Rachel Roy married her in 2000 and married her in 2000 and and five. Oh, there it is. Dash married fashion designer Rachel Roy, whom he had dated prior to his relationship with Aaliyah. Ava Dash. Born. What? Ava Dash was born December 7, 
So all that me and Aaliyah been dating stuff, and we was finna get married was a lie. He was dating Rachel Roy and was still messing with Aaliyah. Stop it. Y'all were friends doing the little public dating thing. It was cute. But y'all was not, she was not finna marry no dang dash. Aaliyah wasn't even in it like that. She was not about being tied down. They made public appearances together, took pictures. It was like, oh, they're dating. Stop it. Stop. No one gonna say you didn't love Aaliyah and you wasn't sad and you didn't have a place in your heart, but you was, come on, Dan. You was with Rachel. And you was dating Rachel even at the time when Aaliyah passed. So stop it. But when Aaliyah died, you couldn't be, it couldn't be out in the open. And it was it's like, oh, I'm just checking on my child that I had previously before me and Aaliyah was, come on, stop. Stop. You was dating her and Rachel at the same time. That's why you married Rachel later. You had to wait a couple of years before you went ahead and just gone ahead and married Rachel. So the fans wouldn't jump down your throat. So I'm not attacking Danny. I'm just bringing some reality to the situation. See, they lucky the internet wasn't what, what, it, what it is now. Yeah, Becky with the good hair. She ruined a lot of stuff, boy. Like I said, when we get to the Patreon, we're going to talk a lot more about a lot of this stuff that went on. But she was a natural beauty. And this is what young black women would see. Because they were like this. They were petite. They didn't have to have big boobs or implants and all this stuff. They didn't have to have that. And the fact that her brother wasn't with her, you know, this was a surprise because her brother was normally always around her. Aaliyah was never really a child. See, she was on Star Search when she was like probably 10 and just she was always carried herself as an adult because she was more like how they treat child actors. Her parents groomed her to be into entertainment when she was in Detroit. So she was mature for her age. Even when she was young, she had to conduct interviews and she was always as a 10 year old acting the way she was acting like some overly sophisticated for a 10 year old child. She was a child attached into an adult world and introduced to things that she shouldn't have ever had to see at a very long, young age. Yeah, because it's stuff, it's things I want to say, but I can't say it unless it's on the Patreon, you know, because it'll get knocked out of context. But yeah, pl plenty of people called Dame out on that before. They was like, Dame, stop it, man. You was dating Rachel. Cut it out. It's people that called him out on it. It's just people just don't remember. He was called out for that. It was like, man, stop all this Aaliyah stuff, man. Like, for real. He was dating Rachel. 
He was messing around with Rachel. They wasn't talking about no marriage. It was like, cut it out. Leah was not about to marry you, dog. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, they had to do that because what they were going to say, Aaliyah was just out there. I mean, the thing is, she was young. She was dating. She's young. She didn't want to be tied down, you know, because she dated Jay-Z. They were friends, all cool, and she ended up liking Dane more because Dane was more funny, outgoing, so she started kicking it with Dane. But they weren't a couple. They were just really cool with each other. Like Dame said, they weren't around each other a lot because they both had things to, that was going on. Rachel was around a lot. But I ain't going to say, like, he didn't care about her. You know, that would hurt anybody. You know, I had two exes that I know of that's not here anymore. You know, I showed y'all a picture of one of them. You know, I was sad. And I, she had already passed away. And I never knew about it until years later. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, I ran into somebody I didn't even know knew her. You know, but, you know, her addiction took its toll on her. She couldn't beat that. Mm -hmm. So what is your lead? Aaliyah made her songs, and the reason why things took off was the music videos. Music videos were everything back then. Yeah, we, we stated that. We stated that Jay-Z was first. Everybody knows that. But the thing is, is that she talked to some other people, too. She was dating. Like, they, they'll go out on a date. She went out on a date with um another person before Jay-Z. You know, they just met and just dated. It don't mean that they slept together and all that stuff. I ain't going to say her and Dane didn't, but I'm just saying. They were all, she was a young person, just 20, 21 years of age, just coming into her own, you know, so this was her time. Did Tupac mess with Aaliyah? I don't think so. But one of the first rap artists at that time 
to put her on display was Nas. Nas did that, you don't, you won't see me tonight and put her on that song. On the I Am album, the double CD. That blew up. You won't see me tonight. No, you won't see me tomorrow. I want to tell all your friends. So nobody was doing songs with Aaliyah like that. Like in that format, having her singing on the hooks, nobody was really doing that until that. So Nas was one of the first ones to really do that. The God, the God, the God, Nazir, the Queen, the Queen, the Queen, Alia. <laughs> Nazir and Alia, the King and Queen. Right after that, Jay had to have him. What's up, Jay? You need some Carcino t-shirts? Oh, I got t-shirts in there. They bash a LeBron, though. They all in the Teespring. <laughs> yeah, you must have got here a little late. So Dame is just did an interview because it's the 20th anniversary of Aaliyah's passing. Um, they're talking about in particular, Aaliyah's, uh, like, Hype Williams took the plane that Lenny Kravitz had left for Aaliyah, according to Dame Dash. Like I said, I heard something similar as, like, he left it for her and all of that. And I'm like, why wouldn't she take it if he left it for her? And Hype Williams took the plane for himself. Now, how true is it? We never know. Yeah, hey, look at me. See, I have a to-do list that I always do. I've already called Sandra. I can take that off. The real estate app, wall picks, took care of that. Q dollars, tax forms, detail the card. That's the only thing I got left over here. Red means urgent. Need to take care of it right away. This, not as important. These are calls I gotta make. So you gotta organize your life if you wanna be organized, period, till it becomes second nature. So this helps you save time. Sidebar. What's up, Dangerous Minds? Now, that's the thing though. We don't know how true any of this is because it could have been like Lenny said, like, hey, you could use the plane if you want to. He probably told that to, to Hype Williams and his team just took the plane and said, well, Leah's already got her plane. You know, you never know what that situation is. All I could tell you is uh, there's a lot of details that went on in the 48 hours before that plane took off. But I don't want to upset nobody, so I'll just do it on the Patreon. So therefore, everybody can hear it on the Patreon, the parts I know. Some people probably know it already, some people don't. But I can tell you one thing, whoever wrote that book was lying their ass off.
Why are you talking about Kobe autopsy? I mean, Kobe's been gone now. Him and Gigi, rest in peace. They've been gone now for about a year, year and a half, man. And I still feel like Kobe is here. So his birthday was just yesterday. I didn't even want to do any happy birthday Kobe videos and all that. I didn't want to think about it. DMX never dated Aaliyah. They never dated. They had good chemistry in the movie, but that wasn't really her love interest in the film. Her love interest was, was Jet Li, who was like 50 at the time of the movie. <laughs> Yeah. Kobe was insane with work ethic. The harder Kobe worked, the more he felt he could beat anybody in the world. But his work ethic was insane. Like, people just don't understand. He don't know how to shut it down. He didn't know how to shut it down. When he was in it, he was in it. Like July, August, September. <laughs> he does not play. When the NBA season ends, he gives a month to his family. A whole month he going to spend with the wife, the kids. He going to knock all that out. After the 4th of July weekend, Kobe Bryant goes into training immediately after the 4th of July weekend. As soon as that weekend is over, Kobe goes into, all right, it's time. And I mean... Training to you vomit. Then try to go on the road with Kobe. Kobe's going to go to whatever. If they got AAU going on or somewhere where they got gyms, like some stadiums, he'll get permission from them to do shoot around. He said, hey, you know, I need to come in early and get up some shots. They'd be like, Kobe? Yeah, sure. <laughs> the other team they playing don't even contest that. They just let him do it. But if in case, like one team, they didn't. Uh, who was the team they played? And they wouldn't let Kobe get some shots up. I think it was Utah. And they wouldn't let Kobe uh, get some shots up before the game. Saying, no, nah, he can't do that. He was like, okay. <laughs> he was like, all right, no problem. Kobe went to an elementary school. <laughs> they had a, a, somewhere in Salt Lake City, an elementary school with a gym, a basketball court. And he's like, is it 94 feet? It's 94 feet. <laughs> Him, same size. Let's go. Let's get some shots up. Got his shots up.
Well, I don't need to see any autopsy photos of Kobe Bryant. I don't need that. I know he's gone. I would not want to see that. So I don't need to see any of that. The only thing that can do is depress you. I, I don't even know why anybody would want to look at that. I just hope his children, whatever, the photos or whatever, I just hope that's not out there for them to ever see. Like, I don't think we need to see autopsy photos or people that's in caskets, you know. I just don't think that needs to be seen. Lost my grandmother, you know, right in front of me. Thanks for the cash out, man. I appreciate that. Thank you. People pass away. Oh, yeah, Patty Mills is great. I mean, you just saw him score 40 points on Team USA. They didn't put that run together. They were in trouble. You saw what he did with France. Patty Mills can go. It's, it's Pop that holds him back. Pop wants him to play Pop basketball. I don't need you going out there scoring, putting up for it. I want you to move the ball around. You saw what he what happened when they take the training wheels off of <laughs> Patty Mills. Patty Mills could do that every night. Why do you think the deal was done for him? They saw Patty Mills for the first time. They was like, he could he's capable of this? <laughs> they was like, yeah. He was killing the whole tournament. And they was like, what is going on here? He was like, hey, that's pop. <laughs> so then before the game we even started, they traded for Patty Mills. They was like, we need him on the team. What's behind me? Talking about my bed? much it's you know people people have their own assertions about things as far as where they should be in life what's going on in life who should be doing what you know they always gonna do that it's never gonna change 
But that's why the only thing people passing away does is grow you up. It grows you up. That's his job, to prepare you. You came to take things that hurt and pain. You can classify that a little differently when people pass away that you love. You understand it now, what real pain is. So you know how to deal with that. Dame is a very smart man. Dame just makes dumb mistakes. Some people just, their, their ego, they can't get out of their own way. And this is one of the reasons why I could never do business with Dame Dash. And like a lot of other people be like, I can't deal with Dame. Can't work with him. And I wouldn't be able to blame him. Because... It's hard to work with someone who's arrogant and narcissistic. You see, in business, you got to be able to delegate and say, you know what? I'm going to delegate this over to this project. Or I'm going to de delegate this to somebody else who might be a little bit more knowledgeable than you. Just because you're the owner of the company don't mean that you're the end all know all of everything. This guy might know this part of the business a lot better, better than you. You're good at what you're good at, but this person is good at this. You have to let them do that to assist you. Let them be great at what they do to assist you. Dane can't do that. He's got to have his hand in all of it. He don't know how. Bam. Gotta make the bed in the morning. Bam! Oh, charcoal, brother. Eh, I don't know. It's I don't really think he did anything wrong, to be honest. But then again, it's the Charlo brothers. You know, they always do. They take the stupid right out and they surrounded by a bunch of stupid people. That's going to tell them nothing because they don't want to blow the bag. Jamal is the dumbest one. Jamal has actually got sense. But he just got to follow his big brother because he's like, hey, this is my big brother. I got to follow him. I'll be like, dude, y'all got to stop this because all this temper tantrum stuff is not good for you. It's not. And it seems like nobody want to tell y'all y'all acting like fools because of the money. So now... It looked like a situation that you're going to have to spend money on because you two acting out, showing that Charlo temper. Yeah, I did my screen fiend, um, Far From Home Spider-Man trailer review with all the Easter eggs, all that stuff. Yeah, we did all of it. Showed y'all a lot too. I never thought like that. I always thought that to me, Aaliyah was different. Aaliyah was so special. Yeah, I got the whole bedroom set coming for this room. I don't know what day it's gonna arrive, but it's already ordered. Uh, Okay, this room is cool. But 
She was special. She was the next coming. Because TLC came, then Aaliyah came, right in the middle of it. People forget that Aaliyah came out in like 95. She came out in like 94, 95, right when TLC had dropped in like 92. So she came in the middle of that. And then when One in a Million came out, TLC was basically doing like... They were growing up like they were becoming in their 25, 26, 27. They were going into the adulthood. So the next generation of young girls, Aaliyah was who they wanted to be like. She had the new style, the new dance, the new sound. See? She was what they wanted Missy to be. Missy had everything. She was just big bone. And they was just like, man, you know, you if you weren't so big bone, you would be great. So Missy had to do all of these weird things to take the distraction off of her weight. Because people made so much emphasis on her weight. So she did all of those different camera and all that wacky stuff. So people, it took attention away from her weight. And she proved everybody wrong. So when Aaliyah came and she was doing all these things for Aaliyah, Aaliyah was, that was what they wanted. She was their ideal girl of what the record industry wanted the beautiful girl. She's petite. And she could do all these dance moves and choreography. Because this is the same choreography Missy was doing. She did all of it. And all the young girls, they love Missy and they love Timbaland. This is what brought them to prominence. One day people are going to look back and because people are so young, they don't understand, you know, like it's been 20 years. It's a whole new generation of children who don't really know who Aaliyah was. They heard of her because they parents. Their mom had their hair like Aaliyah, tried to be like Aaliyah. Like my mom used to dress like that. My mom used to be like that. And I love the fact she was her. She was herself. She was an A cup. She, she was petite. She didn't have to have no big gigantic ghetto booty, fake booty, fake everything. She was just naturally beautiful. And it just goes to show you, nobody thought Aaliyah was ugly. Nobody like, oh, I can't date her. Nope. She was looked at as beautiful and she spent time meeting fans All right she was just gorgeous people can be beautiful no matter what they don't have to have the same body and that's the problem now with everybody in the world everybody in the world now that is the problem everybody gotta look the same now everybody's like a damn Barbie doll. Big goofy lips, super big eyelashes. Fake boobs, fake butt. Everybody gotta look like that. And I'm like, oh, the Kim Kardashian kit. <laughs> They got no feelings in their lips. They can't eat nothing. Oh, no, I can't eat nothing for six days. I got no feelings here. (laughs) 
You got women out here taking out loans. Loans from a bank. Taking out $5,000 loans to get breast implants. Taking out $3,000 to get a bootleg Brazilian butt lift. Botox in the lips, another $2,500. They didn't spend about $14,000 to $12,000 in loans. Some people $25,000. These plastic surgeons are coming up, making money hand over fist. Oh, the beautiful thing about the Botox is you got to keep coming back for shots. Oh, uh, Dr. Miami, it's about 50 Dr. Miamis. <laughs> They're going to be looking like that dude from, because you even got the men doing it. Men is out here getting all this plastic surgery, especially in Hollywood. It's all you see. They got one dude, man, they would be like, what's that, just go with it? That one guy, he got feeling. He's like, dude, you got any more feeling in your face? And this one spot right here, yeah. He drinking water, it's pouring all down his body. He can't feel anything. Oh, man. He's like, come on, man. When are you going to do your work on me, man? Oh, man. I don't know. So many people that have been in there, man. I don't want to get in there and mess it up. Oh, uh, come on, baby. You know, I got to stay in the game. Baby, you got to stay in the game. <laughs> That's how they mind is. They feel like they're old and they're out the game if they don't get all this cosmetic surgery. Do you, I look like the type of person that's going to get some plastic surgery for people on YouTube? <laughs> for anybody. I, that's why I say I wouldn't make it in Hollywood. They, they don't want me, person like me, out there. I've been out there, so I already know. I, they, people in Hollywood know right away who's Hollywood and who isn't and who's ready for it and who, who ain't ready to be in certain settings. They ask you certain questions. They do certain things to see how you respond to these things. Because they know an average person is going to go, What the hell? Oh, hell no. Why is he holding on to him like that? Ugh. Man, it's crazy. Yeah, they, man, yeah, they, they weird up in here, bro. No, nah, I ain't going to stay. I got to bounce. <laughs> No, we got to do this for this. No, man. I don't know what's going on up in here. I saw this in a movie. I got to get up out of here. Yeah. No, nah, I got to be about. <laughs> now nah, I don't want to drink nothing. I don't want to eat nothing y'all got. I'll wake up tied up somewhere, chained up or something. <laughs> uh-uh. I'm good. Where the car? <laughs> no, nah, you can stay. Get out, perfect thing, and I'm getting right out. I remember I was down there in Hollywood, and I was like, no, I could pay for my own food. You know, like, I don't need y'all to pay for me. I saw that $1,000 plate charity. That was cheap. $1,000 a plate? Uh, yeah. About what I said? <laughs> I was kind of tripping, right? <laughs> you know that In-N-Out burger? Yeah, I, you know, because I don't have to be here. <laughs> I'm good with that. Yes, on the Patreon, we will be talking about what happened in those 48 hours that led. That was the most avoidable crash probably in the history of plane accidents, what happened with Aaliyah. It wasn't one thing that went wrong. 
It was about 15 things that went wrong. That all were flags to that plane to not go anywhere. 15 different things was going wrong. So I understand Dame is hot at, at you know, at uh, Hype Williams because, you know, he heard Hype got the, took the plane that was supposed to be for Aaliyah, but the record company... They, they hold a lot of blame for this. A lot of blame falls on their head. That What happened to her shouldn't have happened to her. There's about 15 different things that went wrong. So that person who made the book and the female, male, whoever wrote that lie, talking about she was drugged and, and put on the plane and she was asleep. When they put her on the plane, these things are, I feel bad. The family might have to read that nonsense. Well, Hype had took a year off. Like, I don't think he did nothing in 2003. Aaliyah died in 2001. It was a lot of controversy about that for the whole year. He was working, and then he just didn't work at all for, like, 2003. I guess he was doing some other stuff, but he didn't do nothing, really, that whole year. And then he kind of went back to work. But 2003, you couldn't find Hype Week. Dame said, you know, they had a, a conversation. He cussed him out about it, so... I don't know. That's between Dame and Hype Williams. You know, Hype got to say something about it if he's going to say anything at all. But he kind of just dumped everything on Hype Williams, but Hype Williams ain't the one that, you know, Aaliyah's working for. He's the director. You know, Dame's mad that he was making it, like stretching it for an extra day because he's just taking money out of the record company. He's like, I've worked with Hype. Hype's just trying to get more money. You know, like he's thinking back to Big Pimpin' when he filmed and shot Big Pimpin'. It's a lot more to that story. Um, the Sweden Princess, a lot more to that story. But that's another reason. Like I told you, it's a lot of red flags that went down that that plane should have never taken off. It was so many flags that any other people, and they tried to say, oh, well, Leah was very demanding and made sure that the plane was going, going to have to take off. She insisted. So. We're going to get into all that on the Patreon. Believe me, we'll do that today. We're doing that today. Because, yeah, it's, yeah, we'll do that on the Patreon today. As a matter of fact, let me get started on that now, because I really want to just let loose on this right now while I'm still doing it. So after I finish this, I'm going to get ready for the Patreon. All right, I'm out. Don't forget to hit the like button, people. Oh, damn, I got to charge the phone.